Hi, I'm Scott. I design, build, and repair woodworking pieces. I'm opening up the doors to my shop to help you become a better woodworker. So today's an exciting day. We've got handrails that are going in, and I've never done this before. So I brought in an expert. This is Doug from Country Lane Woodshop, and he's going to help me through this process and teach me how to install these handrails much better than they were before. So we're going to start by taking a look at what was done before by the home builder, and then Doug's going to walk us through how to properly install handrails. This is a very typical subdivision type handrail installation. As you can see here, the railing system was installed countersunk with a fastener system screwed through the face of the handrail. This application is a very fast way to install handrails, but really it's not correct. At the end of the day, this would be plugged with a, a matching wood plug, sanded and finished, but still see that fastening product. Uh, what we're going to show you today is a better way to fasten the system, which is invisible, but a stronger system. What we'll have to do here today is, uh, when we do our new handrail app application, is make sure that these all fit in and are plumb. I typically make a, a little piece of the actual handrail we're going to use. Um, it fits onto the, the spindle. Now we were able to determine the actual spindle length. Uh, this mock-up is actually going to allow us to determine the exact length and how it's going to mount onto the newel post. Um, in the application we're going to use the fastening system, you'll see in a minute, um, we've determined roughly where we want uh, to mount our handrail on. And at this point, we're ready to proceed on determining the actual length of handrail. In this step, we are preparing for the location for the zip bolt to be applied to the handrail. Uh, we're going to come down roughly a half an inch on, on the handrail from the fillet cut of the handrail. At that point, we'll center it up. It's, this is a three inch handrail. We are going to obviously go to our inch and a half point on here, which is in there. And then what we'll do is we'll take a smaller pilot drill. We're going to use a quarter inch at this point. Very good. Here we go. We're going to drill this uh, as deep as we can because we're going to be putting a forester bit in here. Okay, we're going to switch over to a little larger bit. They require a 3 8 hole in here. At this point, we'll go to our larger bit. There we go. Okay, that should be fine. We've set our miter saw up here on a 41 and a half degree angle. That angle has been determined by the actual slope of the stairs. We will cut that at this point and prepare to put the force foot cut in after that. This step we're going to prepare for our force foot cut. The force foot cut is where our adapter goes in to mount the handrail to the newel post. We're going to come in. It's two and a half inches from halfway up this point here. So two and a half inches right here. We'll mark this. Then we'll take this to our drill press and we'll drill our one inch force bit in there.
So we showed the bolt situation that uh, comes through the newel post. It, it now is actually traveling inside the handrail. This is a zip bolt we bought from Richelieu. Uh, this actually goes up into the uh, hole that we drilled with our Forstner bit. And uh, we will proceed to tighten this, uh, this bolt up. Now that we have the zip bolt adapter in here, we're going to use our Allen key and insert it in there. We just keep tightening. What this will do is allow the handrail to pull in tightly against the newel post or half newel that we have here and we'll get a nice snug fit and uh, everything will be secure and snug. Okay, we're going to mount the bottom section of handrail to the newel post. We've drilled a countersink hole here to in order for the uh, fastener screw to, to sink in and be flush. We're going to pre-drill here just to stop anything from cracking and you're splitting out. I like to use a round head screw. This actually allows the product to pull in nice and tight as opposed to splitting the wood out. Nice and tight, and the head of the screw is sunk into the wood. This is the end result. We started off with a stair system where we had golden oak handrails, newel posts, and spindles, as well as really worn out carpet. What we were looking for is something that looked more traditional. So we've closed in the stair stringers, added bigger newel posts, put in a new handrail system and spindles, and we've added wainscoting on the sides to give it a more traditional look. This is a series of videos where we show you how you can go about and do a similar thing. We had a lot of fun with this project and I hope you enjoyed the videos. If you want to leave a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And if you give us a thumbs up rating, that'll help others find these videos as well. Until next time, enjoy your time in the woodshop.